because I think blockchain is a great platform for future techno for future applications. How big is your stake in um, Bitcoin? In Bitcoin, relatively small. Mark Cuban once said that he prefers bananas over Bitcoin. Now apparently he prefers EDH over Bitcoin. Is there a good reason why? Both of them effectively are platforms that enable a lot to happen. But Bitcoin right now has really evolved to be primarily a store value and it's very difficult to use it for anything else. Hey everyone, welcome back to Wealthy Value, the community for informed people looking to become financially smarter. Make sure to subscribe to our weekly videos where we cover the future of business, innovation and finance. It's time to swim with the sharks. Enter Mark Cuban, the star of the well-known show Shark Tank. Not only is the man a multi-billionaire, but he also owns Dallas Mavericks. And he's pretty outspoken as well. The Cryptoverse is still reminiscent of his 2019 utterance, and feel free to quote me on that one, I would rather have bananas than Bitcoin. Back then, he deemed fruits to have more intrinsic value than digital tokens, which might only make sense if intrinsic value refers to calcium. You know, any alternative asset, any asset period that is looking for appreciation has to be sold with narratives, has to be. A share of stock, right? Apple computer used to be a cyclical stock and went up and down with cyclical. Now it's a growth stock. The narrative for gold historically has been a hedge against doomsday, a hedge against inflation. I've always thought gold was kind of a joke, you know, that there was no true intrinsic value other than some, you know, industrial manufacturing. And true gold holds its color better than most metals, but no one needs gold jewelry. <laughs> you know, it's not like the world can't survive without gold jewelry. So, you know, the narrative that it's precious helps build value. And Bitcoin kind of is the same way. There is no true connection between inflation other than the fact that all assets could go up in price, right, with inflation. And Bitcoin could be one of them, but so could the cost of a car and so could, you know, anything else for that matter. If the Federal Reserve keeps on printing money, then you need an asset other than the Federal Reserve that you can hold in order to offset that the inevitable inflation that comes with it. Now, it seems like Mr. Cuban has had a change of heart. Not only does he keep referring to Bitcoin as digital gold, but he also admits that he's had it in his investment portfolio for a while, alongside other major cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum and even Dogecoin, which he bought for his son just for funds. Uh, looking at Dogecoin's skyrocketing price, his son is the one having funds now. Currently, his portfolio allocation is broken down as 60% Bitcoin, 30% Ethereum, and 10% the rest. Even though he's mostly bought into Bitcoin, he has admitted that he's placing high stakes in Ethereum, the second biggest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. I wish I had bought it sooner, but I started buying it four years ago simply because it's the closest we have to a true currency, he admitted recently. Bitcoin right now has really evolved to be primarily a store value. It's become digital gold. You can use it as a platform that enables other things, but it requires a whole lot more, right? It requires wrapping or, or doing a variety of other things. Um, whereas Ethereum, you know, there's just a lot more built-in utility in its organic and native form. Just the ability to use smart contracts organically and natively is just a significant difference right now. I think you'll see there's more reason to buy ETH right now beyond just being a store of value. But it doesn't exclude, you know, being a store of value to buy ETH, if that makes sense. He no longer thinks that Bitcoin is worse than the yellow fruit, but he's not quite convinced that BTC is fit for daily use. Bitcoin right now has really evolved to be primarily a store of value and it's very difficult to use it for anything else. If you want, it's become digital gold. You know, you use it as a platform that enables other things, but it requires a whole lot more, right? It requires wrapping or doing a variety of other things and it acts more as collateral than anything else in order for it to gain additional utility, he recently said. I never saw Bitcoin as, as a currency and if you look back to any conversation I've had about it, I've always been really positive about block. I was one of those people that was positive about block, saw Bitcoin as a store of value, but thought it was crazy that people thought it would be a currency. 
And, you know, there's lots of people that have been talking about the Lightning Network for years and the changes. But as we saw in 2017, you know, you know, Bitcoin really is not designed to be a currency. So what makes EDH a better cryptocurrency? Building a utility in this organic and native form, according to Cuban. That's not to say that there aren't layer twos on Bitcoin and that, you know, create new value and create new opportunities. But you really have to work a lot harder on Bitcoin than you do on Ethereum. That's what Mr. Cuban says. He goes on to note that ETH is often used by NFTs to do more things and because smart contracts just make it a little bit simpler to do development and because we're looking at hopefully a shorter term evolution to ETH too. You know, who knows exactly? I mean, I'm not trying to be a prognosticator on pricing or anything like that, but if we get to proof of stake, when we get to proof of stake, you know, the, the holdback of the impact on the environment will change immediately. And that is going to give some people a reason to use Ethereum as a, a store of value over Bitcoin right there. The applications leveraging smart contracts and extensions on Ethereum will dwarf Bitcoin. Okay, well, Mark certainly has a point. Developers have been working on Ethereum's improvement for a while now, moving in from the proof of work to the proof of stake mode that will require users to stake 32 ETH to become a validator on the platform. In doing so, Vitalik Buterin is trying to fix the platform's main issue and that scalability. For the time being, the platform is unable to handle a sufficient number of transactions and thus become more efficient and eventually mainstream. Although the process hasn't been completed yet, there are grounds to believe that the completion is just around the corner. Plus, non-fungible tokens are indeed in vogue nowadays. This class of tokens is edging towards mass adoption as demand for the unique digital assets grows. Even The Weeknd and Tekashi69 are joining the party. These tokens are especially in high demand among gamers and collectors, which is a huge business sector. There, there are a lot of undiscovered artists on there that are putting up their work because it's the one place where you can go in there and mint something for free and it doesn't cost anything until you actually sell it. And it's your way to then you know, show off and, and learn and really have a chance to sell with no cost. So I like that and their traffic is just exploding, you know, for somebody who's trying to invest or somebody who's trying to understand markets and track them, it's a, it's a great tool. And there's a couple others that are going to be closing very shortly. So regardless of Cuban's claims, it's also noteworthy that Ethereum's price keeps going up. In the past week alone, it went up by more than 18%, with bulls gearing up for further growth, saying that this is just the beginning. So what's your take on ADH? Is it really a better pick than BTC? Drop a comment below, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the notifications button. Thank you for watching.